Hi, I'm Dave Hillowitz. Uh, I'm a film composer, among other things. I have to write some end credits music, and I thought it would be fun to go through the process, um, talk a little bit about how I make my music. So there are a couple things I want to cover today. One of them uh, is Spitfire's new British drama toolkit. I just got a hold of it, and um, it's, it's pretty cool, and I haven't actually used it in a real queue that I've submitted to a director yet. So I'm kind of excited to use it for this. But that's not actually the instrument I'm going to start with. The instrument I'm going to start with is actually another Spitfire instrument, um, the soft um, piano, the Labs, Spitfire Lab soft piano. And if you haven't downloaded it yet, you should. It's free. Um, uh, this, is, this is what it sounds like on its own. So actually, I, I, I should explain a little bit about how I use it. It's not probably the traditional way. So this is what it sounds like on its own. So it's really pretty, but it's really muted. It's really bassy. And I have this weird tick in my music making where I like things to be a little trebly, maybe a little more trebly than most people. So my way around this with the Labs instrument is to pair it with another piano. I've also got uh, Addictive Keys Grand Piano. Uh, it, it's, a, it's a decent grand piano plug-in. Uh, it actually came free with my audio uh, interface. So that's why I have it. So what I do is I pair it up with labs and so that the two are playing side by side, but I don't play them uh, evenly. The addictive keys velocities are scaled down so that the max velocity that it will ever hit, if I hit 127 on my keyboard, it's actually gonna come out as 40 and that's gonna be sent to addictive keys. But labs gets the full 127. So this is without addictive keys. This is with addictive keys. It's subtle. There is, a, there is something there though. There's like a slight edge. Okay, so we've got our instrument picked out. And the reason I start with this is I, I find that if I can come up with a good idea that sounds good with the soft piano, if I add strings in, if I add violin, whatever, it's gonna sound, a, it's gonna sound even better. But uh, it's, a, it's a really good starting point and that way I can work with just one instrument. Okay, so there's another thing and that's that I don't tend to use a traditional piano controller. I do have one, um, but the thing that I most often use is the launch pad. There it is. So the first thing I'm going to do is I have to choose a tempo, so I'm going to Gonna tap a tempo out quickly here. Let's say 80. Seems about right. Okay, so now I go back into live. Trim it, bring it down to a loop. Okay, I think that it's kind of offset. I think that's the actual first. The goal of the first loop for me is always to be able to take away the metronome. Once I've got that first loop that gives some kind of energy to a piece, then I know I don't need the metronome and I can let that loop and whatever weird timing thing that I did when I was performing the loop guide the entire rest of the piece. Okay, so I've been futzing with it for a few minutes and I came up with two versions of the loop. One that sounds like this. One that sounds like this. Time to write a chord progression. Okay, so I'm going to make some new tracks and I'm going to try to write a chord progression around this. Okay, 
Let's play the clip. So what I hear in my head goes something like this. Moving on, let's, uh, I think it's actually finally time to get the British Drama Toolkit running. Okay, so the British Drama Toolkit is super weird. Um, it's not a normal instrument. <laughs> uh, it doesn't, like, you actually, when you play it, you don't know what instrument it's going to play. There's basically a series of ensembles. There's like a... Um, um, a clarinet and a flute and piccolo ensemble and then there's a violin viola and cello ensemble and depending on the velocity that you hit the the key it, it plays a different instrument um and the idea is that it should kind of always sound good and should always give you this kind of texture that will make uh i don't know that will that will make a drama cue good Okay, so let's listen back to our cue and see how we can use it. Okay, let's see if we can... The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to grab one of these piano... Well, that is way too loud. Oh, right, because it was recorded with a launch pad, which has a volume of 127. and we'll do one cello. You know, it'd be nice if the cello didn't follow the exact same notes. Okay, let's play with it. Well, I don't know how to delete them. far up can we get that to go That's definitely adding something. So the last thing is to see if there's not some sort of... One of the things about the British Drama Toolkit that's good is that they've recorded all these kind of, I don't want to say mistakes, but weird things about the way that people play the violin and the, and the viola. Um, they, re, they run out of bow. They just do weird things. And it's one of the things that makes real live recorded string music sound good and samples sound a little mechanical. So I'm going to try to get some of that texture back into my thing. See if we can get it working. Okay, let's, uh, let's write a melody to go over it. Since I'm writing a melody, it kind of makes sense to go back to the launch pad, which is my main melodic device. So I'm just going to play the chord progression over and over again until something comes up.
Okay, I think it's close enough. I think it's close enough that I can basically just edit the MIDI. Okay, so this is what I ended up with um, for a melody. And I actually added in um, some Tycho drums, which you'll hear. I, I guess I'll just start at the beginning. Okay, that's pretty much it. Um, hope this has been helpful.